Did you know that in Redshift for Cinema 4D there are two general workflows to define whether a material is a metal or a non-metal? The two keywords here are specular and metalness workflow. Both are basically just different languages for expressing whether a material is a metal or a dielectric, meaning a non-metal. In this video we will take a look at how we create metals or non-metals on our own without image textures just using the specular or metalness workflow. Before we get to know how to express the material specificities of metals, we must first become aware what makes metals so fundamentally different from non-metals. And for that, here's a spectacular real-world experimental setup. Polished metal spoon, an old silver spoon, a copper coin and, you name it, a juicy apple. Two main visual things distinguish metals from non-metals. First, no diffuse reflection. Pure, polished metals have virtually no diffuse reflection, only directional specular reflection. This can be proven by trying to cast a shadow on a polished spoon. You will not succeed. Only when the specular reflection experiences a certain roughness, as here on the old silver spoon, Diffuse reflection and thus the receptivity for shadows gradually come into play again. Thus, with increasing roughness, directional specular reflection gradually becomes Lambertian diffuse reflection again. Keep that in mind when dialing in a higher amount of roughness in your material's reflection. Second, coloration and the behavior of the specular reflection. The coloration of pure, non-corroded or oxidized metals comes exclusively from the coloration of the reflection, as here with a copper coin. The reason is that the three spectral colors of light, red, green and blue, are reflected with different free null functions and different absorption. The reflection of the apple, on the other hand, is, typical for dielectrics, not colored. In addition, the specular reflection of polished metals appears to reflect all colors and brightnesses of the environment and thus, simply speaking, behaves in a fully opaque manner. The specular reflection of the apple, on the other hand, seems to reflect predominantly only the brightest parts of the environment and thus behaves visually additively. Let's now take a look at the use of specular and metalness workflow with this e chassis scene. In this blue plastic material, I use the specular workflow. It is the default material creation workflow in the standard material node. The specular workflow is based on the following principles. Base color defines the color of the diffuse reflection or albedo. The metalness slider remains at zero. Reflection color defines the color of the specular reflection, although it should not matter for non-metals. IOR defines the Fresnel behavior of the reflection with a single material-specific Fresnel IOR value, meaning, for example, 1.46 for plastic. Base color weight and the reflection color weight can be adjusted independently. With these principles, non-metals can be created easily and intuitively. However, metals can also be created in the specular workflow. In order to include their specialties, no diffuse reflection, coloration and behavior of the specular reflection, the procedure would be as in this cast iron material for the motor. The base color weight, meaning the amount of diffuse reflection, is set to zero. The reflection color is colored according to the material, in this case cast iron. Since metals have slightly different colors depending on the viewing angle, a free nail node is used here with different shades of gray. The IOR is set to a relatively high value. Values around 10 already produce the strong, fully opaque behavior of a metal reflection. But especially the last two points indicate that this procedure is more of an artistic nature. For a physically based representation of metals, however, physical data for coloration and refractive indices should be used. We will have a look at this in a second. First. Let's now take a look at the metalness workflow using an aluminum material. Under base, the metalness slider is set to 1. This sets the diffuse reflection defect to 0. Base color now exclusively determines the color of the specular reflection at a more perpendicular viewing angle. 
Reflection color can also be defined separately and defines exclusively the color of the specular reflection with an increasingly sharp viewing angle, that means in the area of the object's silhouette. The IOR is ignored as a value. A fixed IOR waits between the two reflection colors of base color and reflection color. Now, of course, the question arises how to integrate the aforementioned physical data for a material-specific IOR and coloring of the reflection. This is where a special redshift node comes in handy. The IOR to metal tints node. Let's take a look at this node. The IOR to metal tints node allows the input of material-specific IOR and absorption values per spectral color red, green and blue. These six values together form a so-called complex IOR and ensure a material-specifically correct color and IOR behavior for the metal. Thus, for this aluminum material, I have entered the material-specific values of aluminum into the node and connect the output port facing to the base color port of the standard material node for the reflection color when viewed at more perpendicular angles. Then, we connect the edge tint port to the reflection color port for the reflection color at sharper viewing angles. This creates a correct color and IOR behavior of the aluminum. Now you may ask, and where do I get such values? Well, the largest source for these data is the website refractiveindex.info. Here we have to select the corresponding metal under 3D Selected Data for 3D Artists in the Metals section. Now we have to enter the wavelengths of the spectral colors red, green and blue, one after another in micrometers, starting with 0.65 for red. The website then spits out Fresnel and absorption values for our metal. We copy the values, enter them in the red slot of our IOR to metal tints node and repeat the process correspondingly with 0.55 for green and 0.45 for blue. During this process we probably grow a lot of grey hairs, because the content of this website is ingenious, but the usage is kinda unintuitive and fiddly. Better to visit the website of Swedish 3D artist Chris Hinterbjord, link in the video description. There you will find ready-made complex IRM values for numerous metals. The value combinations are pre-calculated and available in numerous forms. Definitely worth a bookmark. In summary, we can say that the specular workflow is suitable for the creation of non-metals as well as metals with their specificities. However, as soon as we want to create physically more plausible metals, the metalness workflow comes in handy, which, especially in combination with the IRR to metal tints node, lets us create correct IRRs and colorings for metals of all kinds. Please have a look at the finished project shown in this video via the link below. If you like this video, press the subscribe button and don't miss the next episode of Did You Know Redshift for Cinema 4D every Metallic Wednesday on this channel.